So we're here at Le Web 2010 uh, with Bertrand Picard. And uh, so you have a successful overnight uh, solar powered flight. So uh, uh, what is the next step? What is, what is going to happen next things? So now that we know that our airplane can fly day and night with no fuel, we're going to make several cycles, fly across Europe, across America, and the final goal is to fly around the world. And simultaneously, to try to motivate as many people as possible to implement more pioneering spirit into their daily life in terms of energy saving, new technologies, clean tech, renewable energy. Because everything we do in the air with the solar impulse airplane can be done on the ground. And this is what we want to encourage people to do. So uh, is, there, is there like a calendar? Do you think, do you know when you're going to attempt to fly across Europe? Or is there, when, when, how soon can that happen? So the flights across Europe with solar energy, uh, that would be between May and July 2011. Maybe 2012 across the US. It could also be flights to the Middle East or to Africa. Yeah. 2013, we should have the flight test with the new airplane that we are constructing for the round the world flight. And 2014, hopefully, around the world. So that no be, fuel, just on solar that's power. That's the second plane, right? That's the second plane, Because yeah. for now you only have one plane. You cannot build a second one of the same uh, to, do, to fly twice at the same time. Now what, what we want to do now is to use the, the knowledge and the experience of this first airplane in order to make a second one that is even more performant. It will be lighter, it will be bigger, uh, we have more payload, and uh, the goal is to be able to stay airborne for more than five days and five nights in a row. Nice. So, uh, Solar Impulse is a lot about the philosophy, right? It's not uh, um, like it's about communicating. Uh, is that what it is? Also? You, are, you are absolutely right. Yeah. Solar Impulse is not built to transport passengers. It's yeah. built to transport messages. The philosophy of pioneering encourage people to leave their old habits, their old ways of thinking in order to be able to open themselves to new ways of thinking, to invent a better future, because after going to the moon, we know we can, we can do incredible things. Now we have to make a better future on this planet, not on the moon, here, in terms of quality of life. And probably the main thing we have to achieve is to get rid of the dependency to fossil energy. So on, the, on, the, on your plane you have a battery to fly at night. So how is it in terms of flying uh, electric airplanes? Uh, what is, uh, what you call it, uh, the efficiency of that? Is it possible that somebody like EasyJet could build some electric flights? Or how soon? Or what, what do they need to do? If I tell you that we will soon transport passengers on solar airplane, saying that would be completely crazy. Okay. But saying it will never happen yeah. would be completely stupid. Okay. <laughs> because it might happen, we don't know. Yeah. You know, we have to open new, new ways, new doors, yeah. new roads for exploration. When the Wright brothers made their first flight, it was a huge thing in the history of mankind. Well, it was 200 meters. Yeah. And 24 years later, Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic. Okay. And then Chuck Yeager broke the speed of sound. And then yeah. Neil Armstrong went on the moon. So we see that once the door is open, technology comes and industrials also come and take, take the lead. But we have to initiate the move and this is what Solar Impulse is about. But what I'm trying to understand is uh, in terms of range, uh, for example EasyJet and all these cheap airlines, they don't fly very far. Do you think it might be possible to have huge batteries and somehow be able to achieve something, like even small ranges? You know, right now to transport one passenger, we need 64 meter wingspan for one person. So it's clear that the technology does not allow today to transport 200 passengers. But the technology today, if it was implemented for cars, for heating systems, for air cones, for insulation of houses, for lighting, and so on, it would allow us already to divide by two the consumption of fossil energy coal, gas, and oil. So, so this is really the message. Probably airplanes will be the last one to get rid of kerosene. Yeah, okay. So, uh, so, so could you just say a, little, a story about uh, when you were flying in a balloon around the world, uh, 
Uh, uh, was there some like uh, were you scared or were you uh, at some points or? Well, flying the balloon around the world non-stop. Yeah. That was something that had no benchmark. Nobody had done it. So every second of the flight was something new that no one had experienced before. And this was the scary part. When you do something that people had already achieved, you know it's yeah. possible, so you just follow what others have done. But when you lead a new move, it's sometimes a little frightening. But you know, the pioneers are not the ones who are never afraid. The pioneers are the ones who accept the fear, accept the risk of failing, and that's why sometimes they succeed. So your, your parents and grand, uh, your parents at least uh, told you some things that uh, that like uh, they, they told you that what did they tell you? <laughs> well, you know the role models I had were really encouraging. My my grandfather was the first man ever in the stratosphere, the first one to see with his own eyes the curvature of the Earth. My father was the first one to touch the bottom of the ocean in the Mariana Trench, 11,000 meters depth. All their friends were astronauts, divers, explorers, adventurers, environmentalists. So, of course, I always thought that's the only way to do it. That's, that's life. And when I was a teenager, I was quite disappointed to see that a lot of people didn't think like that. A lot of people were scared about moving out of their comfort zone. Do you think we need to have politicians uh, that are more scientists than uh, politicians? making the decisions why we use money? We need politicians with visions, not politicians for which the future is just the next election. This is a disaster. The, 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 the average of political vision now is so short term. So what we have to understand is that in every party, left, center or right, there are good people with visions. And there are people we should also not elect because they have no visions. So we have to choose people now. We have to stop choosing parties. We have to choose people, individual candidates. I believe this is a way to change the world. Thanks. Uh, just the last question. Are you uh, going to run for something at one point? No. I'm not going to run in a political party or government because I would lose half of the people who support me if I go into a party. Oh, yeah. You see, I prefer to be out of the parties and to make politics through an interview like this one with you. Okay, thank you very much. Oh,